Now let's have Dorothy coming in and I appreciate you, uh, Vince. Uh, stay put for the next, uh, uh, you know, session of delivery. Uh, right about now, let's uh, welcome Dorothy. Dorothy uh, Mang is the first female to speak on our space this year. Karibu. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be in this space and this topic, which is very dear to my heart. So I want to take the, this discussion about tribalism. I really like what the, the former speaker has said, and I want to take it much deeper. Uh, so we have to know that ex, uh, tribalism is experienced by individuals. Suppose some, forget about looking at a society. As individuals, you experience it as rejection. And psychologically, there is no pain deeper than rejection. Rejection, psych psychologists have, have shown that when you are rejected, you feel the same pain as you would feel if your leg broke. And if, when your leg broke, the, the, if, and if you feel the same pain, years later, you'll forget how you felt. But if you are reminded at the point at which you are rejected, you will re relieve the pain again as if the leg was breaking at that point. I want to say that I agree that our ancestors were pitted against each other. I come from Kenya, the Luos and the Kikuyus. But you have to know that the, those, those ancestors felt that pain. And so what has been happening is that that pain has been relieved again and again through generations. Because... Um, and, and you can see that even the names we call each other, it doesn't matter from where. It's, they are dehumanizing pain, names born out of that pain. And I want to answer the, the person who was asking, can we face this monster, which is called tribalism? Yes, I think we can. But we have to realize that it is at individual level. Because when, as a child, I suffered tribalism myself, that's why it's very dear to me. Because I am a Kikuyu and I grew up in Western Kenya. And the children in a class, and I was the only Kikuyu, <laughs> they were calling me Mau Mau Kidogo. And I went home. And mm. so I asked my dad, what does that mean? He was shocked. And because I was being called that by a teacher. And then he told me the whole history about the Mau Mau rebellion and how I should be proud because they chased out the British colonialism. So as a child, what I was taught, very difficult to change. So what you, what you taught, what we teach our children, and some of our children learn even just by listening to our, to in the societies, by listening to the stories we talk, and especially during the political, the political hypes when, when there is election, they are listening to it and they are getting it into their psyche. So guess what? Later on, I come to Netherlands, I relocate to Netherlands, and the, I'm, I'm facing racism. And what I was taught by my dad when I was six years old comes back again. Who are you as a Dutch to treat me wrongly? I am a Kikuyu. We fought the British with our bare hands. And it was so difficult for me to settle in Netherlands. I even went into depression for five years. And when I went for, for, for therapy, discovered the root cause was the tribalism. So what I want to say is this. Yes, we can face it, but we have to understand Really, like especially the last, the last cycle of elections in Kenya, we have to understand how my heart breaks at the youngsters who have had all these negative things said about their tribe, about their leaders. They internalize them. They are psychological. They have psychological effects. They are painful. It's not a joke. They are painful. And they even change the way you look at yourself. It changed the way what I grew up. It changed the way I look at me. I had definitely a lot of insecurity and superiority complex. That's why some tribes look at themselves with some entitlement and others as victims. But this, this, we have to see how serious this thing is. And that's why I like to be here. And not just look at it only at a political level, but how we are going to change it for our children who are growing up. Because this, this call, name calling each other and all this on social media, people take internalize them and they have psychological effects. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> and so I, I hope we can, we can get a way of moving forward, having more difficult conversations, you know, to see how we can even, I hope one day, 
really go into a level where we can convince our governments to have times when people when the government can pay even to have uh, help people to unlearn this children to unlearn this to look at ourselves another way and to even bring an awareness of the dire effects of this tribalism and dehumanizing each other i yield the mic uh, Dorothy, th thank you so much. And I listened to you so pensively as you were speaking about uh, tribalism and how it has personally affected you. I do know you at, uh, at a different professional level and you are, you are an author. If you don't mind before you leave because you hinted to me you'll be leaving, can you speak a few, three minutes about your book and what it's all about and what it covers in these issues? So I have authored a book called Invisible No More. And the main reason for me to have that that um, that name is to expose that tribalism is no longer invisible. The effects of tribalism are no longer in uh, are no longer invisible. That we make them visible. And the book is about how to stop being a victim, to take control of your life, um, and to stop the blame game, to stop the stress and the anger and the overwhelm that comes uh, with tribalism, because that's what I suffered. There was a lot of stress and anger inward, sometimes even not aware. And just to make everything, the ills of the tribalism visible. So the book is Invisible No More, and you can get it at a, a free download on uh, www.bookinvisiblenormore.com. The book is coming out in March. So I hope I'll have another opportunity, <laughs> Eli, uh, and I'll be very, very glad to answer any questions. Uh, I'm a confidence coach, and I know that tribalism brings a lot of insecurity and low self-esteem and the way we see each other, we see you see yourself. So the book is really to help you about how you see yourself and to take back your space and your and who you are. Thank you so much, Eli, for the opportunity to talk about my book. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button to show that you liked it. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and hit on the notification key so that you get to be the first to know when we have a new release of the weekly insight.